Tennessee Governor Bill Lee is asking lawmakers to pass a new gun law. The 11th hour push for an order of protection law has been shot down by the House and the Senate. Tonight, we're getting a better look at what that type of legislation looks like. Reporter Mary Klingler spoke with legal and mental health experts to get a better understanding of how it could impact you. This isn't a Republican or Democrat issue. This is a society issue. Attorney Chad Tyndall says this gun law is different than a red flag law. I believe in the Second Amendment, but if we have this very narrow people that should not have possession of guns because they may do something to hurt someone, then it makes perfect sense that we would have a law that would protect that. He says it would act similarly to order protection laws that are already in place in Tennessee. For example, domestic violence cases. If you're found to have engaged in domestic violence, threatened domestic violence, or stalking someone. Well, if an order of protection goes down, part of that is going to be you're going to be required to surrender your guns because the law is determined that you're a risk. The proposal would allow authorities to take guns away from people a judge deems a danger to themselves or others. In many cases, that's already the law across the state. The law is determined that you're a risk by virtue of being a risk. The law says, well, you shouldn't be able to have guns so you could do something worse. But instead, the governor's proposal is a limited order of protection, 180 days. Mental health therapist Julius Jeffries says the proposal respects both ends. It's not taking away anyone's firearms, but also, yes, we're doing these assessments and we're looking to make sure that everybody who does have access to firearms has the mental capacity and has the responsibility to use it in a way that is safe for themselves and others and not using it to harm those around them. Critics like attorney T. Scott Jones call the governor's pitch impractical. The reason that I say that is because these individuals a lot of times don't have the financial wherewithal to hire counsel to fight effectively the power of both the police and the judiciary with regards to the taking of their very important constitutional right. Reporting in Knoxville, I'm Mary Klingler. 19 states already have red flag laws. Cosby Representative Jeremy Faison told us that this late in the session, it might be better for the governor to form a task force with parents, teachers, mental health professionals, and law enforcement officers. After that, a proper discussion on that law can be held.